Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another episode of what is the Arsenal News Show. Joining you every morning at 8 a.m. UK time. Hope you're doing good. Hope you're doing well. Thank you, as always, for making this a part of your morning routines. Uh, it's the weekend. We've made it. Thank goodness. Uh, Saturday is here. Day off. Lovely stuff. And what does day off mean? Chat box. I'm not even going to tell you. What does a day off mean for me these days? Uh, good morning, everybody joining us in the chat box. Black Shine, good morning to you, to Stephen, to Mark, to Sweating Merlot, to Stevie. Uh, good morning to Amira, Martin, Matt G, Alpha, and Olu. Good morning to Peter, Omar, Mr. E. Uh, we've got Paul, Johnny, Mr. SNLO. We've got Stephen, Carl, Kaiser, AFC Cape Town, Johnny, Steve, Josh, Marcus as well, who, of course, joined us on yesterday's preview show uh, with Moss. So if you haven't yet watched our preview show, looking back uh, or looking rather ahead um, to the game against Brighton on Sunday, uh, certainly do get involved. Yes, Sweating Merlot, it means golf. Thank you very much. He's in tune. He knows. <laughs> he knows right now. It's under the pitch and pop. It's, uh, it's practice. Practice is is what makes perfect, as they say. But yes, do go check out uh, the Arsenal versus Brighton preview that we did yesterday. Uh, and make sure if you haven't done so on this video to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, press that subscribe button to continually get updated with all the latest Arsenal news. And of course, with the Arsenal transfer show starting come the end of the season in less than three weeks time, there's lots to discuss. Now, Balogun scored his 20th goal of the Liga season, another penalty, um, and despite the fact that Rons went to Lons, uh, Rons, Rons played Lons <laughs> in Liga uh, yesterday and lost, unfortunately, 2-1, despite not only taking the lead, but also having a man advantage. Uh, Kevin Danso was sent off in the 19th minute, but Seiko Fofana, a name that I know plenty of Arsenal fans will be aware of, got the winning goal in the second half, and, and that does kind of, unfortunately, uh, leave Rons' hopes of, of getting anywhere close to those European places in significant bother. Uh, Lons, meanwhile, doing amazingly well. They have played a game more than PSG, um, but they are only three points off PSG, having won 22 games, drawn nine, lost four, uh, and are sitting in a Champions League qualification spot. Could they be in Arsenal's group next season? We'll have to wait and see. But an amazing season for Lons. Uh, that they have had so far this campaign. Now, uh, Arsenal, I don't know why it says Arsenal rumoured to face Barcelona, because they're not only rumoured to face Barcelona, but they will be facing Barcelona. But that's not the story that I want to talk to you about. It's the rumours that are growing of a Granite Xhaka exit. Uh, that is what I want to discuss with you uh, this morning, because uh, continually we are seeing discussions taking place regarding the Swiss midfielder uh, being moved on uh, from Arsenal. And uh, whether or not this turns out to be true, we'll have to wait and see. But it does, it's, it's a lot of momentum behind this now. We've seen TalkSport, um, Alex Crook, I believe, reporting um, that this is the case, that there is uh, an increasing possibility that Arsenal do not want to allow Xhaka, his contract, to run down and lose him on a free. And if they can cash in on him, they will. The figures that are being touted around the 10 million euro figure, I can't get my head around why Arsenal would be interested in losing a starting quality centre midfielder for 10 million. I'd rather keep him for the two years. If that means running down his contract, that's fine. But I'd rather keep him, upgrade on him and allow a greater strength in depth to the squad. I think personally that's the right way forwards. But uh, these reports continue to suggest that Granit Xhaka could indeed leave Arsenal in the summer. Uh, moving forwards again, and uh, Brighton are said to be closing in on a free deal to sign Mahmoud Dahoud, uh, the Borussia Dortmund and German international. And uh, he is a player, of course, that's been playing in the Bundesliga now for some time. Dortmund signed him uh, as rather an exciting midfielder and has established himself as a, a Bundesliga regular. But will be leaving uh, Borussia Dortmund in the summer and Brighton look like they've got their man. And that does possibly ask the question, what does this therefore mean for Moises Caicedo? Will Moises Caicedo be affected by this deal? Dahoud, of course, is a very box-to-box -box midfielder and therefore replaces Caicedo, you would think. And so does that open up the possibility of them securing somebody that could replace Caicedo should they need them. So certainly one uh, to be excited about. Yeah, Pinny Ween, Mahmoud, Mahmoud Dahoud, is a fantastic name, footballer. Uh, certainly one of the best. Borussia Dortmund have always had kind of a knack of signing some of the best named footballers. Axel Witzel being another 
Um, but yeah, and uh, Schlotterbeck, very much like that. It's a great name as well. There's a lot of German names that are very, very good indeed. Um, moving forwards and sticking with the Bundesliga players, uh, Arsenal, according to uh, Aaron's, uh, I said to have an interest uh, from The Guardian in Mohamed Simakan, uh, a French international RB Leipzig defender who I have done a piece on this morning that you can go and read on football.london if you haven't done so already. It's a whole piece around why I think he might be the perfect defender that Arsenal could sign this summer. Not only can he play centre-back, but he can play right-back and he can offer plenty going forwards. Playing in that right full-back or wing-back position, he's got three goals and six assists, but also maintains a very good defensive record as well. He's in the 90th plus percentile in terms of aerial duels and ranks highly as well for interceptions and clearances. Uh, I go into extra detail in the article, so I reckon it's worth your time going and giving it a read over on the football.london website. It is out now. You can find it on my page or just go onto the Arsenal Football London homepage. And I think it's the, the trending top article at the moment. So certainly worth your time. Uh, checking that one out. But yes, Simakan said Arsenal uh, to have a significant interest in the player, a growing strong interest in the player and a player that Arsenal are keeping a track of as they look to try and sign a defender. He has only signed a new deal back in December and they signed him for around £15 million. And you can be expected that, that after now turning 23 uh, this month, He's still worth a lot of money. I went all German. Worth. He's worth a lot of money. <laughs> but uh, I'm doing a lot of stuff on the Bundesliga, clearly. And it's affected the accent now. But he is worth uh, plenty of money. And uh, Arsenal may have to go as high as 40 to 50 million euros, I think, if they want to get hold of, indeed, Mohamed Simakan. And Mikel Arteta conducted his press conference yesterday in which he discussed a number of topics, including team news, which we'll talk about shortly. Um, but I want to talk about specifically a number of uh, instances from the press conference. Firstly, he was asked about Aaron Ramsdale's contract. He said, at the moment, there's nothing to announce with an individual. We'll do that as a club like we always do, but it's not the moment to talk about that. And he was asked, of course, with the new surrounding a new contract if allegedly being offered a new deal is credit to his performances. And he said, yeah, we are very happy with him. The way he's developed, the way he's performed and the trajectory that he's had in the past two seasons has been remarkable. We're really happy with him and he's a really important player for us. He was asked about transfers. He says the conversation now has to be about Brighton and the games that we have. We are planning to win the title. We want to be fully focused on that and all those other things are distractions and we don't want to be anywhere near that. Sticking with Brighton, though, he was actually asked a very interesting question about whether or not Arsenal could look to replicate Brighton's transfer model. This is something that I've talked about on the channel before and something I've actually written an article about in which I said in that article that Arsenal shouldn't look to replicate Brighton's transfer model because Brighton's transfer model simply wouldn't work at Arsenal for a number of reasons. And Arteta agrees. He says, no, you cannot replicate it. I think the model that Brighton has is great for Brighton. We cannot have the same model. We have to have a different model. I'm sure there are things we can apply to our model that they do extremely well, but it's a different model. I'm saying model a lot. Uh, they have different demands. They have different size of club and probably a different approach as well. So it would be a mistake, in my opinion, to try and do that. Yes. Uh, despite Andy Naylor at The Athletic tweeting that Arsenal maybe should be looking to recruit Brighton's recruitment team. No, that's not the right way forwards. That's not the way that we should be looking at how Arsenal interact with the club. So we'll have to wait and see if indeed there are any changes to the way Arsenal approach the transfer market in the future. But we shouldn't be looking to adopt the Brighton way of doing things. And I agree with Arteta, who clearly agrees with some of my former articles that I've written as well. Now, on Alexander Zinchenko and William Saliba. Now, he did confirm that William Saliba is, of course, going to be out for the game uh, against Brighton and a doubt for the game against Nottingham Forest as well. But he did not want to rule out both of them for the whole season. He says, we have another session tomorrow before the Brighton game and we are trying to get players back for that. Today, we haven't trained on the pitch, so we'll know more tomorrow with Saliba. Uh, it's for sure he's not going to be fit for this game and we are doubting whether he'll be fit for the next game as well. But we want to keep the hope going and make sure that we give ourselves the best chance of having them back. Uh, he was asked about on whether 
uh, Zinchenko uh, was being out for the season. If there was any truth in the situation, he said no. So he kind of ruled that out. He was then asked about Kieran Tierney and his kind of opportunity with Zinch Zinch uh, Zinchenko being out. And he said, there are opportunities for everybody. In every game, they have to show that they are up to it. And then we have to make the right or wrong decision with the lineup, giving the players the minutes that they deserve. It's very difficult with players in this sport because you pick 11 to play and some to be subs and it's not always right. So you do it all the time with your best intention and that kind of links in again to the talk around rotation and that big factor that Arteta is going to have to work on I think something that we all look at as something that Arteta needs to work on for next season is his, is his rotation I think slimming the squad somewhat we talk about strengthening the squad yes but I think actually Arsenal what they need to do is look towards Manchester City's model that word coming up again um, but in terms of having 18 19 players rather than the 25 and having 18, 19 players that you can rely upon that are going to be fit for the majority of the season and, of course, can offer you starting level quality if you want to indeed make rotations throughout the squad. I think Tierney is one of those that can be as good as the starter, is not better at times in different situations. And hopefully we're going to see that as well in the coming weeks. But yeah, I mean, William Saliba in particular, though, it's disappointing that he may not play again this season. Uh, he's been an absolute asset. And I think we can all agree that he's been a very damaging loss for us. Um, and that should certainly infer what Arsenal spend in the transfer market. Now, you shouldn't be spending all that much on replacing your second choice VPN with what should be your first choice VPN. And that, of course, comes with the brilliant discount that you can get by going to nordvpn.com slash to get yourself a significant discount off a one or two year plan for the greatest NordVPN, or not even NordVPN, the greatest VPN service out there. Uh, it gives you that ability to, of course, change your geolocation and, of course, change your ability to be safe and secure online into a sense of feeling completely safe and secure online, keeping those pesky trackers and peeping top bullies away from whatever you want to see on the internet. You can do that in peace, in privacy, in quiet. Make sure you have a VPN. If you don't, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what to tell you. If you haven't got one in 2023, I don't know what you're doing surfing the net these days. You're risky people. Too risky. Don't be risky. Get a VPN. Get NordVPN. It's certainly worth your time, your money, and your investment. Not only that, but of course, there is a brand new prize that's been going for the last few days or so. The Thierry Henry signed and framed shirt with the uh, television screen playing some of his best clips as well as plenty of instant win prizes just by entering the competition. I can tell you that this prize has got lots of tickets left, which means that you've got a great chance of winning just by entering it. Only 115 tickets have been sold, which means if you buy a ticket, you've got a 1 in 115 chance right now. Well, 116, I suppose, if you buy one of 299 available tickets. You've got a great chance of winning a great prize and lots of instant win prizes just by entering, including a signed and framed Tony Adams shirt, two Arsenal club shop vouchers worth £25 each and uh, a £5 football prize site credit uh, prizes as well to be won. Don't miss out. Right, let's go to part two. Your questions, your thoughts, feelings, queries are right after this. Lovely stuff. Um, it's always nice seeing in the chat box people try and predict how this is going to go and uh, <laughs> how the transitions might work. And I sometimes catch it and then I have to try and on the spot think of how I'm going to change things up. But uh, yes, please do also have a look at our TGT merchandise. If you do get it, you may have noticed this is looking a little bit crumpled. That's because I sat on it. Don't sit on your TGT hats. It doesn't do them any good. <laughs> I, they are not sitting on protected there's no guarantees that they won't crumple if you sit on them especially if you weigh as much as i do um so uh, i would recommend significantly not sitting on your tgt cats but of course if you do buy one which there are now plenty available they are back in stock back on the site uh you can get yourself um involved in, in helping some great causes like the Arsenal Foundation and Cancer McMillan Support as well, which we've raised over £2,000 um, between the two charities already. So thank you for everybody that continues to support the channel. Um, Marcus says, will there be a TGT golf event? Uh, you seem to be doing a lot of practice recently. I mean, I'd love to, um, but I don't want to embarrass myself yet. Maybe sometime in the future when I'm a little bit better. Uh, James says, with Arsenal focusing on going to America in pre-season, are we risking alienating our other international fan bases by not having alternative tour 
locations? I think a fair question. Uh, I hope not. Obviously, this is the second year in a row that we visit America. We have American owners and we're going to their SoFi Stadium to play Barcelona, of course, in one of those in the newly announced fixture. We might still be playing in the Community Shield and I think we're waiting to see whether or not we're going to play in the Community Shield. And that could happen if we finish first or second because if we finish first, of course, we'll be in the Community Shield. But if we finish second and Manchester City win the FA Cup, it means that we then go into the Community Shield with first playing second. That's how it works. So... Um, we could still be in the Community Shield even if we finish second this season, um, which would be an interesting opportunity to win some silverware, I guess. But uh, yeah, well, I guess we're waiting to find out that. But are we alienating fan bases? I think if you do it consistently like for a third year in a row, I think rightly people would start to ask questions. Um, and certainly I think it's a fair question to ask um, about whether or not Arsenal should then look to go elsewhere in the world with some of their other tours. We did go to the Middle East already. If you remember that, we went to the Middle East in mid-season. So we played some games over there. Obviously, there are fans out that support Arsenal out in, in those nations as well, out in Dubai, etc. So that has happened. Uh, we'll be in European football, so there'll be fans across Europe. You'd hope they'd be able to get the chance. But of course, there's Asia, there's Australia, um, South America. I mean, do clubs go to South America? I can't say that Arsenal have been to South America. Um, Africa, you know, we've not been to. Uh, I'm trying to think if Arsenal have ever even been on a pre-season tour in Africa. One to consider. But um, yeah, very interesting indeed. Fair question, James, and certainly one I think is certainly worth asking and Maybe certainly one we can ask the club in the future. Uh, Boss said, uh, would you rather make Jesus the rotation for Saka and therefore bring in Ozymen instead of Diaby? Um, I think, yeah, I would be open to this. I, I have said before, I'd like to see Arsenal kind of look to a physical variation in the striker option that they've got available to them. Um, and I think Jesus can provide competition for Saka on that right-hand side. So, yes. Yes, I would. Absolutely. Um Let's go to uh, Gunner Dude says, with Kieran Tinney at the back, any reason why he couldn't stay back like White and let Kivior step forward into midfield like Stones does? Kivior and Saliba have shown how good they are on the ball. I think it's something that you have to kind of do over a period of time. It's going to be difficult to kind of just adopt the Stones style back three slash four that Man City do occupy at times. I think Kieran Tierney is still going to push forwards. Um, and I think that's still going to adopt a situation where you see him get more forwards than anyone else in the back four. But yeah, I think there's scope to see White or Kivior push a little bit more than maybe that they would usually. NVR says, no more lives with Hugh, is he? Uh, I haven't been doing a live for Hugh, with Hugh for a, a long while now. Since I started my job, it became impossible to do the... Uh, the watch alongs because I work match days. So obviously I stopped doing the watch alongs with Hugh because of work, but that's that's the only reason why I've had someone ask me that before. But no, me and Hugh are fine. Um, so no, just haven't done one with Hugh in, in a long time. Uh, Johnny says it's mad to me that our best starting 11 has started only nine games together this season. Do you think that we would have won the league already if we had a fully fit 11 all season? I, I think it's. It's fair to assume that if you are a side at the top of the table that can have your best 11 fit for every single one of the 38 games, all of the campaign, you know, you've got a wildly better chance. It's, I think, the Invincibles team of, if you remember the Invincibles team being Lehman, Lauren, Campbell, Colo, Ashley Cole, Gilberto Silva, Vieira, Perez, Jumberg, Bergkamp, Henri. I think that team only played together seven times or something during the Invincibles league season because of injuries, suspensions, you know, things like that. It's fairly common that the best 11 that you have doesn't actually play together re fairly regularly because injuries are just so common or suspensions are just so common. So, yeah, it's understandable um, that we have only seen it, say, nine games. And if we'd have had Jesus available, or Saliba available, then, yeah, we would have had our best 11 to play and maybe have picked up more points than we have done. But... There are only so many points available and Arsenal have picked up the majority of them still with only that best 11 being used nine times. So I think certainly it's uh, uh, yeah an interesting one to, to look at. Um, let's go to um, Highbury Squad says, uh, yes, that we went on a tour to South Africa in the 80s and met Nelson Mandela. Great knowledge. Uh, so there you go. We have indeed been to Africa before. And uh, and by the way, hi, Soph. Thank you for tuning in. Um, but uh, fantastic knowledge. It's, uh, maybe it's something that Arsenal would revisit again and return for a tour of Africa. It feels like certainly something worthwhile and worth doing. So 
uh, we have a massive, massive fan base in Africa. So, yeah, it'd be fantastic to see that happen. Uh, Boss says, why do you feel that Ramos is so great? I've watched clips of him and not very impressed. You must have been watching the wrong clips. Um, I'd suggest watching you know, his time back at Benfica this season. I'd suggest watching his appearances at the World Cup for Portugal. I love his power. I love his pace. I love his composure. You know, he's still so young as well. And I think that he's got all the attributes and the foundation to build upon that a club like Arsenal and a coach like Arteta could really refine the best. Sometimes you need to look beyond what's obvious in front of you and recognise what's coachable in a forward, coachable in a player. And I think that's what you would be able to see from someone like Ramos if given the right tools and the right place to succeed. And yeah, uh, I like him a lot. I'd like Kolo Moani more. Kolo Moani would be my favourite of, of any forward, I think, that we could go for, maybe outside of Aussie men. But even then, I think that Kolo Moani would offer Arsenal all the attributes they want from a centre-forward that can play both centre-forward, can play on the right, but it's got that physicality, the power, the pace, and the intelligence, the, the movement that he possesses too. So, yeah, he would be my number one pick, I think. But Ramos very closely behind. And if you can get Aussie men, great, but I don't think that's going to be feasible unfortunately. A couple more before we wrap up. Um, Mr. Smith Maths Academy says, uh, or Smythes maybe, says, how much money do you think that we'll end up spending in the summer? I think we might break our transfer record this summer. Our transfer record is around 150-ish million quid, I think, that we've spent. And that was during the summer of 20... Was that 2021? When we bought White and Ramsdale and Tavares and Tomiyasu and... Was it that summer? I feel like it was that summer. All transfers, Arsenal. Let's have a quick look at because obviously there was a summer that we bought Pepe and Saliba and Tierney, uh, David Luiz, Danny Ceballos came in on loan. I know we spent a lot of money during that window as well. Um, but I think that was the summer that we we broke our transfer record, the one with um White, Ramsdale, Tommy Asu, who else is there? Erdegaard, of course, as well, Tavares, Lekonga. I think that broke the record. So I think we will break our records. I'd estimate between 150 to 200 million would be what I think that we will spend. So let's wait and see. Uh, Gunnar Roller says, do you think that we could realistically make a move for Ivan Tony? I don't think so. And I personally wouldn't. I've talked about Ivan Tony a number of times on the channel. He's just not the striker that I would personally go for. I'd go for a younger forward. Um, I think the money that you invest in in Tony, you get what you get with Tony. I don't think he takes us to the level of competing with Man City personally. I think we should look to sign a striker that gives us the potential to compete with Man City both now and into the future for an extended period of time. And I'm not sure that Tony does that. So I, I'm not as keen. Right, I've managed to get up the, uh, the all transfers part. So yeah, in... 21-22, we spent 167 million euros uh, during that summer. Um, I'm not seeing a summer where we spent more than that. So, yeah, that was indeed 2021. We broke our transfer record. We, this season, broke our transfer record for both a summer and January um, because, of course, we added uh, Kivior Trossard Jorginho uh, to a already very expensive summer window. So, this year, we've spent more than any other year. But in terms of a summer window, it was 2021 was the summer window that we spent more in just one window. Um, Anasimos says, uh, Tom, I don't know if you've talked about already, but thoughts on Hoyland uh, for Arsenal? Yeah, I have discussed him in the in the past, uh, the Atalanta forward. Very exciting player. Like him a lot. Um, scored, you know, the goals that he's managed to score, especially at international level and early stage already. That's impressive. And uh, one that I think Arsenal fans would like to see brought in again, pace, power. They're the two words that I kind of describe around a striker that I want Arsenal to sign, pace and power. Anyway, thank you everybody for listening. We're going to wrap things up there. Really appreciate your time as always. Do drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And of course, I'll be back tomorrow morning to look ahead to the game against Brighton and any news that drops today and any reaction to the games that go on today, of course, as well. See you soon. Have a fantastic Saturday. And as always, up the Arsenal.